Aloha kako o kapu vaya udanso ko uinoa, and today I'm talking arts and crafts with Bo. <laughs> okay, so yes. I am a human. Nice, that was accurate. But also, it relates to your art. I am a creative mover. Could you describe a little bit more about this, especially um, as it relates to your work on a day to day basis and your training? Mm -hmm. So, I like to use the term creative mover because it doesn't isolate or like confine me to one type of movement so whether it's yoga which is a lot of what I've spent the last few years doing and teaching and it can include dance acrobatics aerial arts circus arts so that's what I mean when I say creative mover so how long have you been working on this craft I know you mentioned your role as a teacher but what about as a student or as a, a leader of your program um so aerial arts I've spent the last few years working on, but more specifically in the last like year and a half getting more into silks and trapeze, but on and off before that. Um, yoga has been a few years and teaching, um, and then in terms of Iolana Collective, we just had our first full year anniversary, so it's been one year of the program running and then the program being in like the works two years before that so for those who don't know what that is or what that's referring to can you describe that beast mm -hmm. oh the beast of the Iolana beast. collective so Iolana collective is a not-for-profit program that aims to get girls of high need low income into creative movement so whether it be dance acro aerial yoga at no cost to them or their families and i founded and direct that program and continue to run it and we're just about to technically start our third cohort and we'll have about nine girls i think iolana collective primarily came out of my own desire for something like that that I wish I had had in the past because the more I did yoga and the more I did aerial arts, circus arts, the more I noticed that there was a really big gap in uh, the ratio of people of lower socioeconomic status but also people of color and I wanted to see that change because to me there's this idea that you're missing if, if creative movement in a way is about storytelling and about sharing something, um, expression, whether it be protest or it be uh, a moment to bring people together, is it comes from your particular point of view and if you narrow down who's in that room to a certain level of socioeconomic status, you limit the amount of creativity and the amount of essentially art that you can create because you're you're keeping other people from being at the table and so because a lot of creative movement costs a lot of money to make a part of your life I wanted to see that change so by getting girls in late middle school high school and even after high school into a program where they were being told that where you are right now in a, your ability your age is not too late and that you have something to share um, and empowering them to to take a risk to do something outside of their comfort zone and hone a skill set while also sharing themselves was what motivated me to do that. Okay, so Ilana, what, why that name? So Iolana is Hawaiian for soaring hawk and it's specifically ref uh, referencing the hawk that flies over the Hawaiian Islands and that it uses the trade winds to its advantage so that it's able to glide over the Hawaiian Islands rather than to be knocked down and kept down. So um, my cousin Jess helped me pick out the name when I was trying to find something that would essentially represent the spirit and the, the mission of Iolana Collective. So all of these girls, and we talk about this when they join the program, that it's this idea of using what feels like a disadvantage, whether that be low income or different things in your life, aspects that make you feel disadvantaged, um, to your advantage. You might answer this question as an instructor, but also as a student. Um, what is the biggest struggle or what is the most 
<laughs> so I'll answer this as a student because this is more memorable, memorable to me and I think more vulnerable than fails as a teacher or instructor because those happen all the time. I would say probably one of my lowest moments was not too long ago when I went to an audition for a training company for circus arts and I put myself out there and it was really, really hard. Um, I was in the room with a lot of people who had skills like in terms of dance and picking up uh, choreography and movement, uh, phrase retention, and that was a weak point for me and also something that scared me a lot and I just had to do it and the audition process was a little more than two hours long and the whole time we were doing things and you're in a scenario where you know you are being directly compared to the people next to you and I managed to get through it. I didn't get into the program. <laughs> and I remember it was really, really hard uh, to still trust that it was a good decision to put myself out there and to be uh, trust that doing it, the process, was just as valuable as getting in or out. Yeah, I don't know if that made sense. Were you just as scared going into it as you were when you were there? Like yeah, I think I was nervous. They don't really tell you, at least for the training company I was auditioning for, they don't really tell you the setup of it, and you're not allowed to observe it or just go as an observer. Um, so when it started off all with dance and about an hour of dance, that was like my worst nightmare because that's definitely where I feel weakest in when I'm compared to other people. And I think my own fears of like, am I graceful enough? Am I, am I a dancer? All of that stuff started to come up. I was really proud of myself for not walking out because even as I was like, oh, I'm missing multiple steps here and I'm just gonna keep going because I told myself it's better to keep going than to be the person they remember because you walked out and you didn't at least finish. So that was a very challenging experience but I would say the aftermath was even more challenging was having to then rumble with the okay I did the really vulnerable big thing I took the risk and now I'm not going to beat myself up over oh you weren't good enough or you weren't enough but working through the emotions of like man you failed in, t in terms of you didn't make it in and that's okay and what can I learn from it and that um it's better to not get into something that you're not ready for than to go into a program um, and constantly be trying to prove yourself. So, yeah, it was a big, big lesson that I'm just now getting to the point that I can talk about it without being like, <gasps> What's your biggest fear when, it's, when it comes to your service arts? Oh, my biggest fear when it comes to pursuing being an aspiring circus artist, da aerial dancer. Um, this might sound really lame, is maybe never getting the approval of other people. I think it's going into it and knowing that you may never be the, the dancer or the performer that other people love or think are is really amazing or awesome or uh, want to include in their pieces or their acts and being like that could be a reality and will I still be okay will I enjoy it will I be proud of myself even if I'm not that performer that everybody wants to be around so how do you approach and deal with that especially since on a daily basis you're either practicing no, as a student never used or instructing Mm -hmm. So I think one of the ways I confront this is actually through Iolana Collective and teaching because I'm basically proving to myself in a way or showing myself that that's a falsehood because when I invest in these girls and I get to see them bloom and them with you know just the beginning of their movement um, journey uh, when they're blooming and they're bringing really beautiful content to the table it is showing me that certain performers that talented dancers and artists don't just come from one walk of life and don't just look one way 
And I believe that, but I think it's reinforcing it and seeing it through the program that reminds me, like, that it's if it's true for these people and it's true on this greater scale, that I'm not some weird exception, but I think that's the, the lie and the fear in your mind is that you're the one exception, that you won't be good enough or you won't be strong enough. And then I think the other way I confront it is I just keep showing up. I mean, I'm like, if I suck... <laughs> then at least I'm relentless and I suck. <laughs> or if I'm, you know, like, that's why I call myself my given name. I call myself the OG brave-ass scaredy cat because I'm like, I'm not fearless. I'm scared all the time. I'm worried about not being good enough all the time, but I'm brave enough to keep going. So, brave-ass scaredy cat. OG. <laughs> <clears throat> So if not this, then what? What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> so if not this art, not this craft or endeavor, what what else? And is there anything else? It's funny because I don't, I feel like I only really can say circus arts at this point because I've kind of gone through this season the last few months of like job changes. And for a while I really... Hold, held fast to being a yoga teacher and that started to change so more than anything it's circus arts for me it's like if not circus arts then circus arts <laughs> um i think the disciplines i'm trying to think of like the practical things i do is that what you mean Okay, so uh, I have a training schedule, so I take certain series classes with coaches, and the really good thing about that is if you are consistently training with specific or certain coaches, they know where you need to improve, and they know where your strengths are, and so they're able to kind of meet you where you are. So I do that uh, twice a week, and then I train a lot of conditioning classes and open gyms so that I'm consistently involved in the community and getting input from other people and the more you train with people the more they're able to give you feedback as well on top of that I do flexibility training at home three to four days a week and Iolana Collective depending on where we are in the term or the season that's either, that's at least once a week if not like three times a week um, and rest because that's just important, more, just as important as all the training. So trying to consist, constantly educate myself and how to train smarter, not harder. So, um, yeah. What do you love about yourself? I think what I love about myself is kind of the reference back to my name that I gave myself. It's like, when I think about the things I'm doing from the outside, if I was a naysayer, I'd be like, why is she doing this? <laughs> why is she pursuing the things she's pursuing? And yet, I just don't stop. So, I think I like that I'm a brave-ass scaredy cat. I love that about myself. So, finish the sentence. I can't live without... I overthink too many things, so this is going to take me a second. Okay. Wait, wait. Say it again. Say it. I can't live without... Romnick Dancel. My OG coach who's cheered me on through every little breakdown I've had about, I'm never going to be good enough, or I'm never going to be able to do this, or I'll never be able to straddle Inver. And he's like, yes, you will. And he just listens. And cheers me on, so, yeah. Good And then, I really could live without... I really could live without, the first thing I thought, I really could live without snubbing. I really don't like when you go to new places to train or anything, any discipline, and people who have been around are like, because you're new, I'm going to snub you until you prove yourself. And I just don't see why we do that to people. I'm like, if somebody's coming in and trying something, they're being vulnerable, they're putting themselves out there, and that is an act of courage. We don't have anything to prove or to judge people more. I'm like, so less of this. Give me an example of yourself. Oh my gosh. I'll give you an example. I can give you so many examples. 
Okay, so a lot of um, couple, 10 more seconds. You could do anything for 10 seconds. You could, it's almost three seconds. So you're almost there. Five seconds and done. You're never going to have to do that again. Oh, wait, you have to do it in two, <laughs> two minutes. You have to do it again. Or I'll be like, Kapu, you got this. That's what I tell myself a lot. I also sing songs to myself. So, you know, the song This Is Me by uh, sung by, performed by Kayla Settle from. So the song This Is Me performed by Kayla Settle uh, from The Greatest Showman. It's a musical that recently came out, but it's all about this is me being like bruised and that I'm not ashamed and that I'm more than enough. It's just like a really empowering song, but I listen to that song. And then if I'm not listening to it, when I'm having a hard time training, I'm singing it to myself. So thank you, Kayla. So what is your most important tool in your art or your craft? What, you can, what can you not live without? Creativity. I think creativity is like, we can get you through being really crappy at something. <laughs> Like, if you don't have the, sh let's say circus arts. So circus artists have a lot of strength, and then they have a lot, of, I like I'm counting with my pinky first, a lot of strength, and a lot of flexibility. There's like this really, this weird middle ground where you have to be incredibly strong, and you have to be incredibly flexible to be like at that level. Um, but if you don't have those, but you're creative, it will get you really, really far. Because creativity will get you through being, through failure. You're like, okay, I failed, how can I fail less next time? Or how can I fail better next time? Versus like, it's an either or. So, creativity. Like, what do you get out of this? What? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, you know, a lot of collective, good feelings like I'm proud of these girls but because I get to see them as cheesy as it sounds sore it's really empowering to me and getting to see them do something that they never thought they could do and for it to potentially in big and small ways change their life is that's reason enough and then circus arts for myself because a mixture of why not and because it terrifies me Say currently, what I'm most proud of resume virtue is founding and directing Eel on a collective because they don't, it literally came from nothing. And I've managed to keep it alive and to make it a, um, a meaningful venue to other people. So that is what I'm resume, virt resume virtue most proud of. And then eulogy virtue. I think what I hope through Iolana Collective and through pursuing being a circus artist myself is, I guess, that I was empowering and brave and that I get, like I shared it with others. It wasn't just for myself. I'm so cold. Thank you, Papa. You're welcome. <laughs> Finger guns. I never do this, and then you put me in front of a camera, and I'm like, pew, 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 pew. I'll try that again. Can you ask me? Oh, that's not like a like a death bed. I meant to say. Any last words? I meant to say. Oh my god. Thank you. Denana. Ha <laughs>